Hey, Pat. Hey. The uh, attached document is for Alberta Wastewater uh, Grant? Yes. Okay. So it's not the federal grant that somehow I got confused. I thought it was federal. I think grant. I was confused, Mayor Carl. We're oh. going to be bringing another grant. I'm sure uh, we're live on Facebook now, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So we'd like to uh, bring this meeting around to order. Uh, would someone from council be willing to read the acknowledgement? I'll read the acknowledgement. Thank you, Councillor George. We, <clears throat> we acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Salte, Blackfoot, Medi, uh, Dene, and Nakoda Sioux. We acknowledge all the first, all the many First Nations, Medi and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. Thank you, Councillor George. So we call this meeting to order and we look for a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. I could put that forward. Thank you, Councillor Pat. I move that we adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Haven't heard none. Um, call for a vote then. Um, Oh, yeah, call for a vote and all in favor. If there's anyone opposed, please say yay. If there's none opposed, then the motion's carried. And it sounds like the motion's carried. So now we move on to council priorities or request for decision. Uh, 8.1 is 2021 Alberta Municipal Water Wastewater Partnership Grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see Councillor Schuler has joined us. Hello. <laughs> She's Councilor waving. Lee is with us as well. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is to provide Council with information about the 2020-21 Alberta Municipal Water Wastewater Partnership Grant that administration would like to make application to. We would like to move Council to move that the Town of Bruderheim support the submission of a 2020-21 Alberta Municipal Water Wastewater Partnership Grant application of $3,702,000 in support of the water reservoir and pumping station upgrades project. The town's matching contribution of $1,143,500, approximately 31% of the project costs, will be secured through MSI Capital. The town works with a variety of agencies to gather supporting documents for infrastructure needs and long-term planning for the town of Ruderheim growth. When grants become available, council can provide administration with guidance on the grants they wish to make an application for. This grant requires partnerships. In the past, uh, Lamont County partnered with us for the grant to do the study and decide what we needed for future growth. Strategic planning areas, an economic development strategy inclusive of business attraction and retention, development of a five-year capital plan, and updated community sustainability plan, working with community partners to complete projects and new initiatives, open and transparent, a community that is educated on responsibilities and limitation of council administration, other impacts, legal and ledge, MJA chapter M26, section 2621, services or activities that are funded by agreement. In summary, Town Council is being asked to consider making application for the 2021 Alberta Municipal Water Wastewater Partnership grant to cover costs associated with the water reservoir and pumping station upgrades project. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that. So we're looking for a motion from Council to move forward with the um, Alberta Municipal Water Wastewater Partnership here. Please tell me. Um, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor okay. George. <laughs> Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Opening up could, to could anyone I, with questions, Councillor Pat. Uh, what was the uh, grant application amount, uh, CAO Patty? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Lee, I'll actually let uh, Mr. Thomas Shaw take off from here to explain the um, actual cost. If you remember when we, uh, I think it was last fall, we came to council with a grant opportunity we applied for before at the federal level that we weren't successful with. Mm -hmm. um, and then we applied for a grant through ACP, the Alberta Community Partnership Grant with Fulmont County to have a study done and engineering drawings. And so to apply for this grant, uh, the Alberta Municipal Water and Waste Bar Partnership, we had to do that um, engineered uh, study to in order it has to be with the application so that's ready to go uh, okay. th that's why we're playing and I'll let uh, Mr. Thomas Schott explain it a little further okay thank you great go ahead Dennis you have the floor thank you welcome everyone tonight 
So this has been a very uh, <clears throat> lengthy and uh, somewhat exhausting uh, task, but we got there. Um, so I'm just, first of all, I can't see council when I bring up my other screen here. So can everybody see, does everybody have a copy of the, uh, the cost estimate in front of them? Yeah, I have what Patty sent us uh, for information for this meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. <clears throat> So I just, if, if council would indulge me, I'd just go through the, uh, the cost estimate a little bit here. Um, so we'll start with the pumping station upgrades. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward in what's happening. It's, it's, uh, um, we'll start with the removal of existing mechanical and building demo. So of course, <clears throat> um, that's the cost that they put in there to remove some of the mechanical, which would be the piping <clears throat> and demoing of some of the buildings. So some of the building does need to be uh, modified. And I, before we, as I go through these numbers, I just want to uh, reinforce, these are estimates. These are not hard costs. These are estimates. So they could change. Um, more than likely, they would be somewhat lower, but it's better to caution on the error of, of uh, putting it on the high side so that we don't short ourselves out on the ground. So I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. Yes. Do you mind if I ask a question? So then, if, yeah, just if, let me if bring costs, you back here. Okay, yeah. So if the costs come in lower, Dennis, then the matching portion that we have to come up with would be less than as well? That is correct. Okay. Thank so you. what we are doing is applying for the maximum amount. We have said, I believe it's 3.7. Uh, sorry, $3.702 million is what we're applying for. And of course, if the estimate comes in lower, um, each matching portion, not just ours, but the federal and the provincial, those matching portions would drop in parallel with ours. So, does that, does everybody understand that? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I'll go back here. Um, <clears throat> supply pumps. So, this one here, uh, we actually took this one out. Um, uh, oh, sorry. No, my mistake. Sorry, I, I thought I was reading another comment. That's the fire pump. So as council is aware, um, the fire pump system, and we've gone through this exercise several times, we require 230 liters per second of fire water flow. We're only able to provide 118 liters per second of fire water flow. We do not meet the provincial requirement to meet that. <clears throat> in order to meet that, we actually have to put in a, a brand new fire pump and piping alongside of that. So that's what that cost is. That's for the motor and pump. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor George. If we put in that size of a pump, can our ex external lines handle that volume? Yes, they can. The, the good thing about uh, leaving our distribution center is we actually have a 14 inch um, that's leaving the distribution center. There is a little bit of uh, piping down the line that we have to do in terms of a pressure relief. However, that's all incorporated in these, in this miscellaneous um, mechanical and building demo. So that all is incorporated already in that cost. Does that answer to your question, Mr. Uh, Councillor Campbell? Yes. Thank you. Uh, interior piping, valving, mechanical modifications. So again, um, I guess this goes back to uh, Councillor Campbell's uh, question, can our system handle it? This will be modifications within the, the distribution pump levels in order to provide that flow requirement downstream. Temporary distribution water pumping, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, once we put the new reservoir online, our distribution pumps will have to go offline <clears throat> in order to commission what we have. What happens there typically is in the past, what I've been involved in is we bring in tanker trucks with pumps attached to them and they will provide our distribution water pressure and maintain pumping. It's for a very short period of time. However, it is a cost and that's the cost that they put in there is 35,000. I suspect that's gonna be considerably lower, but again, we caution on the side of error for that. Uh, Dennis is muted. Sorry, my, my apologies. I'm, I'm toggling two screens here with one laptop. My apologies. Um, 
pumping station startup again, commissioning costs uh, that goes with the contractors, painting and identification of pipes, conduits, and equipment. Uh, again, I'm, I'm sure that's pretty self-explanatory. The PLC and skater programming. So what's because we're putting in a whole new system that's going to require uh, modifications to our programming, how that how it senses pressures, uh, so forth and so forth. There's a, that's the cost for upgrading some of the PLC. And I think council throughout the years have heard me talk about the PLC. So um, that'll be further upgrading uh, to the new equipment that we're putting in. <clears throat> and electrical and controls, that is, uh, we are moving most of the electrical components that are in the distribution plant to the old chlorine room. What that does is it frees up wall space um, we're very cluttered uh, right now when it comes to working room. So we've decided that that is an empty space, not used for anything. Let's move all the electrical over to that side. It makes it cleaner, more accessible uh, when we need to do any sort of maintenance. And again, with the electrical controls, there is new electrical systems coming in into play here. There's new variable frequency drives. And those are what control the speed of the pumps. So those will be new. So again, that's part and parcel to the electrical controls. Are there any questions in that first part? I have one. Go ahead, Councillor George. In your control system, is there built-in anti-surge protection and anti-knock uh, protection? Yes, everything. Every that's already latched on with Fortis, so we actually have that already. Where we have three phases going into that building, George. So it's three phase. Uh, uh, 540 volts so it's already in place um, and when I get down the line here you're going to see what when we talk about the generator how that plays a role. Well I'm not talking really about that but I'm talking about where your pump surge any protection for up head, uh, outbound lines or surge like when for your pumps are surging high pressure yeah they all all the distribution system has uh, pressure reliefs on it already we have that now, and then it'll actually be upsized to the new equipment. Does that answer your question, Councillor Campbell? Yes. Thank you. So I'm just going to toggle about any. Other, oh, I'm sorry. Any other questions on that first part, <clears throat> Dennis? Um, just uh, scrolling through, uh, I noticed that there's miscellaneous three different times: uh, ten thousand, ten thousand, and fifteen thousand. Um, are you going to give us a feel for what that might be? So miscellaneous can be, uh, so let's say we tear apart a flange <clears throat> and uh, the flange, and this is just a very broad example, the flange cracks, or perhaps uh, uh, one of the valves that we reuse aren't working. It's a number that we put in there. That, that is a, a moving number. Um, so I, again, error of caution, put it up on that number because it does happen when we're tearing apart old equipment. So is that just like a... Is that like a contingency fee or a contingency fund kind of? Not really. Uh, contingency will come down to that at the bottom and I'll get a little more elaborate on the contingency. But for layman's terms, uh, Councillor Letko, yes, we'll, we'll say that, okay. yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, does that answer your question? Yep. Um, so is it just like uh, you take a factor off the total amount for each section and figure in that amount? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So I will go down to reservoir expansion and site works. <clears throat> so we have miscellaneous site clearing. That's just moving any debris that's in the way, what have you, uh, it, some fencing that has to come down. Uh, we go into site grading, surface drainage and miscellaneous access road. Again, we have to do some site work to it, uh, uh, grading in terms of, uh, if you can imagine our reservoir is somewhat higher than where we're going, we're going to the north. And the reason we chose going to the north is to keep the cost down on material being removed. So the more north we go, the more open hole we have. So we actually have a lot less uh, site grading to do, which is fantastic in terms of cost. Topsoil finish, finish grading and seeding again, that's when we're done. There'll be some landscaping costs, et cetera, associated with that. Removal of surplus excavated material. Again, we will have to dig a hole to, uh, frame, to uh, uh, frame in the, uh, the concrete. 
So again, that's 25,000. Underground internet connection and piping valves and fittings. Again, so I just, we're breaking down all the internal components of the actual reservoir. So this is everything that's sitting inside the reservoir. So underground interconnection piping, uh, we have some chain link fence and gates that are going around the reservoir, excavation and backfill. Um, structural concrete, um, as you can see, that's a $1.1 million. So um, you can imagine the amount of concrete that's being used for this. Uh, interior and exterior reservoir waterproofing. Again, we have to coat the concrete. Um, exterior damper proofing, damp proofing, sorry. Um, that's again, um, under the roof will have a damp coating put on top of it because the roof and or will become a floor for us um, will have uh, natural grass growing on top of it. Reservoir perimeter roof insulation. Again, that's around the construction and the, uh, the actual structure. Uh, we have uh, leakage testing that we have to do. So again, that's done by uh, uh, hydrostatic testing, if you will. A disinfection costs. Uh, again, we have to disinfect the reservoir we put, before we put it into, uh, before we commission it. Interior piping, valving, and mechanical. Again, everything that would connect to the reservoir from above. Exterior reservoir piping connections, and that will entail uh, overflow piping and any bypassing that we have uh, with the different cells that are going in. Cleaning and disinfection of existing reservoir cells. Again, um, because we're opening up the reservoir to a, a, a new existing structure, we will have to disinfect uh, to for sure protect our, our existing reservoir. Purchase of water from owner for leakage testing. Again, uh, that was a very inflated number. Uh, I think they took a regional component of what some of the other regional players are paying for water that was a little high but again it's, it's just a number that will change it's a moving number and again uh, going back to Councillor Letko's original question to the miscellaneous again 20,000 miscellaneous mm -hmm. it's, just a, it's a, a number that should something happen right is there any questions on that section number two I have one go ahead Councillor George um, this is some of this stuff in this, is this all contracted out? Yes, it is. Isn't there some of this stuff, this, some of this work that we could be doing? We have, have equipment. We could be doing some of the site grading and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, $32,000 is a lot of money. Mr. Mayor, through the Councillor Campbell, when the general contractor, when the contract's tendered out and it's received, the general contractor is responsible for all liabilities in terms of making sure everything that we put forward on the engineering is done to their, uh, their specifics. We are not qualified to do that. Question answered. Thank you. Are there any other questions on that section to council? Um, just one question, uh, Dennis, if I may. So okay. imagine every, everything on this is gonna go through the tender process once we're successful, hopefully we are. Um, the uh, tankage and, and so forth, is it tying into the existing tank or this will be the tank and then the old one eventually will go away? It's Mr. Mayor, it ties into the existing reservoir. Okay. So the existing reservoir would become the pumping reservoir. Um, if you will, the flow of water will come into the into our existing reservoir <clears throat> and a pipe will be inserted into the existing reservoir and move over to the new reservoir. And through a series of channels, it has to go around and make its way all the way back to where the pumps are to not impede short circuiting. So we don't want to short circuit the system. So any water coming in at the front end, it has to come to the back end to get out through the pumps to ensure that we don't have any short circuiting. Great. And so, so you're saying the new uh, reservoir. Go ahead, so You're George. saying the new reservoir will be a, a baffled system then? Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Campbell, that's correct. Um, so the, just to follow up on my uh, original question, so the sizing will be to sufficient for future growth? 
Mr. Mayor, that, that is correct. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, really excited that we get the opportunity to apply for this grant. That would be great news if we could get this. Yeah, I, I think I'd buy all of council a drink. <laughs> okay, number three, on-site power generation. So this is the one that's unfortunate that um, I was really hoping to be able to use our generator that's there, but it is grossly undersized. Um, so our generator is made to uh, do a PTO takeoff fire pump. We can't upsize the current pump that we have to work with that type of motor. So there's a separate generator going outside. That generator will provide power to all the pumps. If we go back to the very beginning, you'll see that we added in a fire pump. So it's a bigger electric fire pump. Um, that one there will be driven should power be fail from our generator. That generator will also uh, supply all the power to the building and the distribution pumps. So that's there in place for emergencies. The diesel fire pump, um, this is a good thing. The diesel fire pump that's there now, there are entities within the province that would be very interested in purchasing that equipment. So there are some funds that can come back into this project later on and be put back into our uh, reserves. Very good. Uh, in, under general, again, mobilization, demobilization, these are standard costs. Engineers, site office, uh, again, they'll put a, a trailer out there. Um, leakage testing, flushing and disinfection of pipes. It's just a summary of everything that we've discussed. Mm -hmm. And then we go down to the bottom and you will see that there is a, a grand total of 2.874 million dollars for the reservoir. $431,000 contingency. That is the standard. 15% is the standard contingency fee on any project. And engineering and testing, $396,600. <clears> the testing will be for concrete coring. We're making, making sure that the concrete integrity is what we call for on spec. So uh, that will be done throughout the course of pouring the concrete. I did have a, a lengthy discussion with with uh, it, the engineers in regards to contingency. When you look at $2.874 million, it's a lot of money, but I also look at 431,000 going. And my question right to the engineers were, if we find $431,000 at work, I, I would be very, very surprised. But it's a number that, it's a standard number they use. I, I can't fathom ever using that number. So we would have to have something very <laughs> catastrophically happen throughout the project in order for that to actually play that big a number. So the likelihood of that would be very rare, um, but it's in there because it's a standard fee. Great. Um, anybody else any questions for Dennis? Yes, I have one. Go ahead. Dennis, we had the divers in that, uh, in the main tank this summer, didn't we? Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Campbell, the divers were in there in the tank this summer. And uh, I, I apologize if that wasn't shared with you, but the results of that were very good. The existing structure was in great shape. So it uh, warrants an attachment then on from old from the old one to the new one. Uh, life the expectancy for the both units should be how many years do you say? Mr. Mayor, through the Council Council, I, I couldn't give you a number, but I can only go by the, what the divers said to me, that it was in excellent shape. There was, uh, to, to elaborate perhaps on that, there was no big pitting of the concrete. There was no flaking, um, nothing showing up on the floors. Um, I would, yeah, it, it was in great shape. I watched the whole video, it was, it was really good. Very good, thank you. Any other questions from Council for Dennis? Uh, Councillor Lynn and then Councillor Judy. Excuse me. So I know these numbers are quite inflated. I can see that. And is there any chance this could be overrun even? And when will we have a chance to get solid numbers on this? Mr. Mayor, through the Councillor Filardo, I think that inflated is a strong word. I think that we use conservative numbers based on previous projects that have been done at this magnitude. Um, however, uh, with saying that, part two to your question is when would we get hard numbers? We would not get hard numbers until it went for tender. 
at that time, that's where we hope we would get um, as many people as we can tendering on it and get the best price. That's when the hard numbers would come into play. Uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor Flardo, does that answer your questions? Yep. Councillor Judy. So with all this work being done and stuff, what's the warranty and all that kind of stuff? Because I mean, you're you're adding one new to an old and making it integrated. What's the warranty and all that kind of stuff happening? Mr. Mayor, through the Councillor uh, Schuler, standard warranty on any type of project like this would be anywhere on some of the equipment would be five years. Mm -hmm. On the structural concrete would be three. Um, and again, there's inspections done throughout that, that warranty period, especially on a project this size. So uh, I feel comfortable with those warranty uh, periods in place. Thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Wayne. Um, once this goes up to tender and comes back, what happens if it comes back higher than our 3.7 million? Uh, are we committed to doing it? Do we have funds to cover that cost? What? What, what happened? Mr. Mayor, through the Council of Electrical, this is going to be a two-part answer. I'd like to employ Patty to help me out with this one too, but typically, um, well, we'll use the, uh, the concrete costs for the sidewalks this year. We were very surprised to see those costs come in the way they did. Um, however, that was strictly just concrete. We have a lot of different components to this reservoir. We have mechanical, electrical, structural, um, so there are a lot of different components that are going to play a role. I think we're going to get very competitive pricing. Um, you know, for me to commit to you and say, will it come in lower? I, I, don't, I can't give you that. If it does come in higher, at that point, we would have to address council. And I think that's where Patty can come in and sort of take over and say what next steps would be. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Leco, procurement process allows us that if it comes in too high, we can retender and take some things out, or we can negotiate, or we can also go to council and say, do we want to do this, right? So what we would do is in our procurement process, we would make sure it's written into the tendering process that we have certain guidelines and expectations. It's a legal jargon that protects you from not having to pay, for instance, like twice as much, right? It's a great question, but um, also there's a lot of what ifs in 2020. That, that, and that's just it. And that's what I'm saying. What if, right? Um, so I mean, this is just a, this is just to apply for the grant. Yeah. Um, and if we were successful in the grant, if we won the lottery ticket, uh, then we would come back to council. And as you know, to accept a grant, uh, it comes back to council. Here's the contract. Here's the conditions at that time. I would take another look, make sure where our funding's in place. If it's not, we would have the option not to take the grant and not to move with the project. Okay, so we're not we're not tied once it comes back from tender then, once? No, it's just saying that I'm not just throwing this grant in without council realizing the impact of, you know, the cost of okay. the project, making sure council supports that we need a new water reservoir and that we've done our due diligence, we've uh, looked at, we've hired an engineer to give us recommendations, again, recommendations. Um, there might be other grant opportunities, like obviously we're keeping our eyes open, me and Mr. Tomashat, and uh, we might not have to use MSI funding. Maybe we can match with a different funding model, right? So yeah, this is just saying to council, if we get this grant, here's a funding opportunity, we may decide to borrow the money, might make more sense, right? Um, there's lots of different options on the table. It's just to make sure that council realizes that we do have to pay 33% and we are committed and this is serious. We're not just um, throwing it in on a whim, right? Okay, no, nope, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't committed once it went to tender and came back higher and figure out, hey, we can't do this now. I didn't wanna, just wanna make sure that we're, I mean, it's fairly significant. So I just wanted to make sure that we're not gonna be held by our toes for Absolutely. it. We are serious about the application, though. Um, yeah. We know oh, yeah. that we've identified this as a serious project that we need to get done. As you know, the fire capacity and uh, the decision to approve another subdivision or another phase of West Woodlands uh, hinges on our ability to provide fire protection to our community and uh, have an, a large enough capacity in our reservoir. So uh, I think Council's given me clear direction that we are moving ahead with those projects and attracting more development. So 
we're prudent to make sure we're thinking about infrastructure and ways to fund it. As you know, council, I'm always about trying to find ways to fund things. So um, again, we have not a crystal ball. And like you said, this year, the sidewalk uh, replacement program really surprised us how high the bids came in. And, and you're absolutely right. This could come in double, like with the post pandemic construction flurry, right? We're not sure. So yeah, a great yeah, question just, though. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Councillor Wayne. Any other questions, Councillor Judy? So is it likely that we're gonna get this MSI capital funding or is it that something that we could be turned down for as well? So I, I have an MSI, we have an account that I can go in and out of and check what our funding availability is. And right now, which is all I can do and recommend to council, we have uh, 2.67, well, 2,678,000 well, funding available for future commitments. So that's a document I printed today. Um, I waited till today to print it and that's the most up-to-date information I have, so. Very so good. with the current funding and the MSI capital, we can afford our 30%. Thank you. Great, any other questions from council? Um, I have a question for Dennis. Um, first of all, I'm grateful that we have the shovel ready project and we get the opportunity to apply for this. And that's what the province is looking for, right? Is shovel ready projects. And this is truly a shovel ready one if we get the grant funding, correct? That, that is correct, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Um, so we didn't talk about electrical supply. Obviously we're gonna need a lot more electrical. Is there enough electrical service over there? We're not gonna run into a problem where, oh, we don't have enough uh, amperage and we gotta run another this or that. and we've taken that into account? Great question, uh, Mr. Mayor, and actually we covered that. So Fortis will have to bring in a new connection line and that is covered off on these costs and some of the miscellaneous items. So uh, we do need uh, to provide a higher, uh, uh, excuse me, I just gotta think, uh, another, a higher, a bigger transformer, my apologies. It's been a long day, uh, a bigger transformer. Fortis is uh, to provide the transformer at their cost because we're taking the power and we will be taking the, the new lines now underground where currently we have them above. They'll actually be going below ground. New electrical codes for anything that is over 600 volt must go underground. So we will be at that 600 volt. So everything will be underground and the transformer is supplied by Fortis at their cost. Great. Um, and thanks for that answer. Uh, and next question is project manager. I didn't see a line for project manager. Um, knowing how busy our staff is, who's gonna be managing this project from the town side? You gonna have enough time to do that, Dennis? Sure. <laughs> you know what, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I will, and the engineers are, are really good to work with, um, you know, going through this process, <clears throat> specifically the electrical engineer has been just fantastic. Um, mechanical, most of the work that goes on, it's, it's meetings, daily meetings. They know what they need to do. Um, engineers will re report to, to me if there's any anomaly or any variance. And again, if it's something I can't handle, I have my CAO who I would go to and take those issues to. So it's really not a lot of work. Um, it's more so just having a set of eyes to make sure everything is, is happening the way it should be. But our engineers are paid a substantial fee to make sure that happens. Okay. Um, and I do have a question about timeframes. Um, is, is there a time frame that the province is saying when these grants are going to be like, obviously we're up against a deadline to make sure we get our application in, but have they said when this money might be let out? Mr. Mayor, actually I'll turn it over to, to, to Councillor or to CAO Patty, but in just in adding very quickly before she answers, uh, typically these types of grants. So I think all of council knows I was part of another grant in another community that we got a reservoir we found out within four months of applying. So the hopes are we would know by spring so we can start spring construction and at the very least get most of the underground uh, done in 2021 uh, prior to freeze up. This project itself is about a 10 to 12 month project, start to finish. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, that's correct. That's my uh, experience. It's been four to six months after application before we hear. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm excited for the opportunity for our town. In a, 
Uh, so do the engineers honestly come out at any time during the project to see how things are going? Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Schuler, if you look under the uh, in, under the schedule of costs, they'll actually have a work trailer there, and there will be an engineer on site ninety percent of the time. Okay, thank you. And if I may just add to Council, and uh, I, I know Patty did a great job explaining our needs uh, for the community to grow. Um, this is a is a great opportunity. I, I really hope we get this grant. We can make it fly. Firewater protection is extremely important in our community. Um, we just can't meet those standards right now. But also growth in our community is extremely important for the, for the future and sustainability of our community. So this reservoir is a very important project for, for our community moving forward. And I really thank council for their commitment to have this project and uh, going forward. And I, I, fingers crossed that we get it. Thank you very much, Dennis. <laughs> Is there any other questions from council? Any closing comments, uh, CEO Pat, before we take it to vote? No, Mr. Mayor, I just wanna say there's some other infrastructure opportunities coming at the federal and provincial levels. So we'll still be bringing more grants and uh, hoping to fund this with other options as well. Great, thank you very much. Uh, once again, uh, thankful for the opportunity. Uh, very grateful that our CIO is on the ball and um, with her staff is able to get these grant applications going for the town. It means a lot for our community for the future. Thank you very much. So without any further qu questions, comments, concerns from council, call for a vote. Any opposed to the motion? Okay, haven't heard none. The motion is carried. And I'm just going to bring my agenda back up because I can't see the agenda right at the moment. And so the motion is carried. Um, all we need now is a motion to adjourn. I make that motion to find a couch or get home before the snow falls again. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Wayne. Anyone opposed to that motion? And the motion's carried. Once again,